morning football. Happy Monday, everybody. We're back in New York City. I'm Kay. This is Nate Burleson. Kyle Grant and Peter Schrager is at the annual league meeting being held in Orlando, Florida. What's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Kay, I'm here at the NFL League meeting. It's an annual tradition. Everyone gets together, owners, coaches, GMs, and they discuss the state of the league and also where the league is going. A lot of different proposals are made for the rules, but also there's a lot of things going on with players, their rosters, and these teams as a whole. Ian Rappaport came on the show earlier today. It was fantastic. Dropping some major news on Odell Beckham and a possibility that he might not be with the Giants next year. We'll get into all that on the show, but back to you in New York because the show is on fire this morning yeah. on a Monday morning. And here so is your hair. The sun just bouncing off of it looking great. What about the guy behind him? You forget his beach towel? You yeah, Peter, there's random pedestrians behind you. You have this incredible halo. Right now. Remember, <laughs> Alan Iverson said he looked at Jordan and could just see his aura. We can see your aura right now, Shrakes. It looks glorious. <laughs> it's glorious. Every, everything's coming up, Shrager. Everything's coming up, Shrager. Peter, you said right the now. deals it's are good. done at the bar. You go ahead and put the lit in Gimlet, my friend. I know you always do. <laughs> <laughs> That laugh. We love Let's it. talk some football. Lead block. Yeah, I know. Thanks we'll so do that. much, Shrake. We'll talk <laughs> to you a little bit. Tom Telesco went and uh, chopped it up with him a little bit early. Did you say lit in Gimlet? That's right. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Lead block. Lead block. <laughs> Annual league meeting, if you haven't heard it, is underway in Orlando. Peter Schrager is down there helping to uh, break down everything that will be talked about and maybe some changes, proposals that will go down. So, Shrake, let's actually kick this back to you and start with a proposed change to the catch rule. What's going on? Is there an end in sight? Is there an actual solution to this issue? Yeah. Guys, Sunday we had a big league meeting where it was the competition committee all in the room and Al Riveron leading it saying, let's get a way to make this work. Let's get the catch rule to work. And a new proposal has been proposed where it's essentially three things. And I'm going to go through it here. Number one, you have to show you have control of the ball. All right. So that's got to be the first thing. Number two, need to have two feet down or any other body part down. And number three, and this is the one that I say with quotes because it looks great on paper, but good luck finding out what this means. Making some sort of football move. Football move. That sounds like surviving the ground to me. Look, there's never going to be a great solution. But like Ian Rappaport said in the last hour, what they did was they looked at some of the most controversial calls in recent years. The Calvin Johnson catch against the Bears, which Nate was a part of. The Jesse James play against the Patriots a year ago. And of course, the Dez Bryant play that you're looking at right now against the in the playoffs. They said, from the naked eye, it looks like these are catches. So let's look at these and let's go backwards and say, what rules can we put in place to decide whether they're catches or not so that they are deemed, yes, catches like they should be. Al Riveron was in front of the competition community. There's going to be votes today uh, moving forward throughout the week. Also, they're going to be discussing it. But the catch rule, the catch rule, which has plagued us so many times over the last couple of years, is now a focal point. And let's get this thing right so that the fans watching the game don't say, we know that's a catch, mm -hmm. when in fact the rules say it's not. Trey, what if we have our Twitter audience who are so vocal and awesome to, uh, Hit us up at hashtag GMFB with their definitions of what a catch is. Great. We'll run some on the show, and we'll sort of uh, kick them back. Maybe we'll help these owners out. Let's do it. Give us a few words. What do you think? At GMFB. Yeah. Shays, we'll get back yeah. to you in just a little bit. Hashtag GMFB, <laughs> what is a catch? Define catch. It's a, yeah. We'll shoot it out from at GMFB right now. You tell us. We'll get your answers on the air. Maybe we'll actually come up with something collaboratively. Yeah. It would be crazy if we actually solved this sucker. Incredible. Yeah. Nate, Calvin Johnson, do you feel redeemed? How do you feel? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I would say I feel redeemed, but at this point I don't care. And I, I'm glad you said that because they say don't cry over spilled milk. I say don't act a fool over a change rule. It, it is what it is, and the rules <laughs> are going to change. So you don't look back and say, well, if I'm a Cowboys fan, I told you that Dez catch was going to be a catch. It could have changed everything. Well, Calvin Johnson, we lost that game to the Bears. It could have changed everything. At this point, who cares? Let's be happy that the rule change is here, though. What I can't appreciate about it, it's possession of the ball. And then after that, it's either getting two feet down, one knee, one hip. We know that a knee or hip is like two feet. And that's all that matters. After that, making a football move, it's completely subjective. But if you really pay attention to it, it's really not that hard. We look at Dez, that third foot hitting the ground. We look at Jesse James, him leaning over, trying to extend in the end zone. Like I said before, I equated it to dunking and it hitting the rim and saying, well, it didn't survive the rim. No, a dunk is a dunk, whether it's a rim skimmer or not. Now you don't penalize these guys for being uber athletic. What we're seeing now, the new age of athlete, once they catch the ball, they're going to try to do something incredibly athletic to make the extra play or to get the extra yard. Now we're not penalizing mm -hmm. these guys for it. 
The best thing is that Survive the Ground is dead. That's a fantastic... It didn't, Survive the Ground did not survive the week. We all hated that. It's gone. Congratulations. My problem... Well, this, this rule is not passed, right? Yeah, this but it seems like it's a death okay, right. it. I, I think it's the, I'm trending towards that. Got it. My problem, Kay, is it's kind of Peter alluded to, the three steps. Control, love it. Feet, two feet down, love it. Yeah. I just wish it would end right there because I'm telling you that football move is ambiguous and they're trying. They're trying really hard. This, as a fan, the second I hear the term football move, I just get annoyed. I hate the term. Yeah. I hate everything it stands for. And Al Riveron, God bless him. It's very difficult. He's doing God's work. He tweeted out even what a football move is. A third step, reaching, extending for the goal line, quote, or the ability to perform such an act. We're still in the weeds here. I don't even know what that means. And neither do I, Kay, and that's a perfect response. I wish it could just stop. <laughs> I caught the ball and I have two feet down. It's a wrap. This football yeah. move needs to move the hell out of here. It yeah. drives me crazy. You make a good point because it's like a fingerprint. It, a football move is different for every athlete. What does athlete, that mean, right? Nate? Is the no, dumbest no. term. Th that, that's, that's the whole point. That's what's difficult Tell about this. Tell me how you really feel, Football Kyle. move? And, and that's oh. what makes it difficult is because every fingerprint is different. Every foot, your football move is different than mine, and that's why it's going to be a problem. But I hope that we're going to have a point in the season where we're going to look at this whole football move and say, you know what? Let's scrap this. Along with surviving the ground, let's bury both of these in the ground. That's, listen, catch the ball, get some I don't think down. there's a solution. There might not be. Yeah. But I honestly think the simpler, the better. Simplify it's it. easy. You're talking out of my backside, and they're probably watching and saying, it's harder than that. Control, two feet down, catch. Yeah. Let's just try it. Yeah. Let's try it, because the football move is for the birds. Yeah. You guys can tell us what you think a catch is. Define it at hashtag GMFB or at GMFB. We'll share those on the air. The other things being discussed in Orlando, of course, one of them, the ongoing debate over the national anthem. Jets owner Christopher Johnson had this to say just yesterday, quote, I can't speak to how other people run their teams, but I just think that trying to forcibly get the players to shut up is a fantastically bad idea. Now, Texans owner Robert McNair has an opposing point of view, saying, quote, our playing field is not the place for political statements, not the place for religious statements. It's the place for football. Peter, opposing views. This will surely be discussed. There might not be a resolution now. I know John Mara said that he didn't want to, uh, this to go much further than May when there's another owner's meeting. But uh, what's your take on this? It's, it's a fascinating thing because this is this elephant in the room, right, as we get to the owners' meetings. And originally I was told they were going to table this conversation completely until the May meetings. But here you go. Here's Jets owner Christopher Johnson. Now, remember, Woody Johnson was the owner of the Jets, the serving owner, and then he went over to take an ambassador role uh, for the new administration. So Christopher Johnson, his, his brother, he comes in and steps in. Kind of a different face and a new face, and he comes in with that term, a fantastically bad idea to tell the players what to do, which – is a, is a different take than what we've heard coming from a lot of these ownership groups. And, of course, it just shows that you have 32 teams, 32 owners, and that two of them can be so completely different on the political spectrum on how they feel about this thing that we aren't at a uniform re response yet. There isn't a uniform decision. And as of right now, they're going to discuss this, but I don't think there's going to be a, a structured policy or a structured rule in place. But the key is conversation. Conversation is going to continue. And did it affect the bottom line profit? Did it affect the relationship between players and owners? Did it reflect the, the did it affect the uh, the impact of obviously the American public and the players on the field doing these uh, these protests? So it's gonna be very interesting how this plays out. But to have two different owners on the record mm -hmm. come out and offer two completely different perspectives. That kind of shows where the NFL is right now, where there are still a lot of opinions, both players and ownership side. Great stuff from Schrager. I can't believe it was even considered to table this until May. This is an issue. Every, there's nothing that's not... We don't live in an apolitical world. This is everywhere. Yeah. This is not going to end. Yeah. Uh, so, so the conversation, even though I, I respect opposing opinions, yeah. it has to happen. We just don't live in that kind of a world anymore. We need to deal with it, and there needs to be a solution. It's well said. And if you think there's no solution for the catch rule, I mean... We're talking about a football move. We're talking about a First Amendment move that yep. players are making. Mm -hmm. And fantastically bad idea or not, you got to be careful because this is your choice that you're making. You can make players stand in one way because you think you're alienating your fan base. But then you risk alienating your players. All right? So it's like you have to pick one. And I just don't see how an owner, a coach, anybody can tell the players you can't take a knee. Now, I know there's people at home, there's people watching right now who hate the knees. They yep. hate that we're talking about mm -hmm. these. That's yeah. fine. That's your right. So boo, buy the jersey and burn it, do whatever you want. That's your right, too. I just cannot see, because you tell the players,
guys, you cannot do it. This is not. This is our team. You cannot take a knee. Then I think the players go nuts, and I think they revolt. Yeah. And then, okay, the fans aren't, ha aren't mad anymore. But now you got a locker room that's pissed off at ownership. Yeah. I don't think you want to do that either. Now, I admire the NBA for how they approach societal issues. I admire some of their coaches. Steve Kerr, Greg Popovich, they come to mind because mm -hmm. they're completely transparent. They're completely honest. And they're, they're not quieted by the league saying you can't talk about politics. You can't talk about religion. You can talk about things that are going on. I commend the NFL for making efforts to try to make the fans happy and also the players happy. But I do agree, though, this is a fantastically bad idea for the simple fact that these are grown men making millions of dollars. And because you're paying them millions of dollars does not mean you can tell them what to do. I know every league is different. I know every player is different. But most importantly, every era is different. We are in a different era now when it comes to politics, when it comes to how people feel about what's going on in our country. And whether you want to embrace it or not, mm -hmm. the youth, the youth is swayed and they're influenced by celebrities, they're influenced by people they look up to, and they're influenced by the athletes they watch on TV every single weekend. And because that, athletes are taking a stand. And sometimes that comes in the form of taking a knee. Now, can the league and the players have a relationship where a player doesn't feel like he has to take a knee because he feels like the NFL has their back and they're doing what they can on the field as long as off the field to help with societal issues? Yes, 100%. But I agree with you. They need to come to some type of understanding and a little bit of a compromise on both sides. Because if you sit there and tell a player you cannot do something, then that player is going to do it because mm -hmm. he is a grown man and he's going to make his own decisions. Or even that they shouldn't do something. They shouldn't. It, there's no room for that on the field. I, look, I can't help but think that that's sort of a naive way to look at it. And when you look at the Nickelodeon red carpet for a Nickelodeon kids show, they have Millie Bobby Brown wearing the Parkland Survivors on her, like making a statement there. You have yeah. Shut Up and Dribble, which is, if nothing, become a unifying rallying cry for yeah. everybody to sort of make a statement. It's just something that's not, it's unavoidable, right? Yeah. Right. We don't live in an apolitical world, so a, a resolution is going to have to be made, and I would assume that one of the things they're going to kick around is something that I sort of read up on, Kyle, yeah. is that maybe they leave it up to the players. If you want to come out for the anthem, you have to stand. If you don't want to stand during the anthem, you can stay in the locker room. What would you make of that sort of a compromise? It's practical, but I think if I was a player and I was being told by ownership, you can do whatever you want, but don't do it on the field, I would say... That's where I get my message across. Right. I, I can't take a knee in the locker room or no one's going to see it. Right. I think the only thing you could maybe try to do to that end is say, use your social media in any way you want. That's yours. Do anything you want away from this. But the fact is, saying to this player, you are hurting our business by doing it in our office place that we own and that we pay for. You're hurting business. So it is our company policy that you can't do it. Now, they can revolt against that company yeah. policy. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that makes any sense. It makes sense to me because... It's practical and it's bottom line. It's not personal. Yeah. You're taking money away from us to, because of your cause. And, and that's it, though. What players are looking at, and I've spoken to these players and I've talked to them, what they see is they have a complete understanding about the finances of this sport. It's a $13 billion industry, and they're looking at these owners, they're looking at the fans and saying, I get it. I might be hurting your pockets by taking a knee, but my people are hurting in the community, and I need people to understand that and identify with what I'm talking about. But like you said, though, there has to be some type of compromise on both sides. I think... What most people need to understand is, regardless of what you feel about how the message is coming across, all the players want is for us to have a better country. Like, that's what it boils down to. Now, how do we do that? Let's take steps forward. Let's open our ears. Let's shut up. Let's stop pointing fingers and figure out a way to make this all better. That's all we want. And I think that we all have a lot of respect for Commissioner Roger Goodell and the owners talking to their players about it. These conversations that are happening at the league meeting are sort of a ripple effect of things that have started between um, in, their, in, their, in their cities, sure. with yeah. Malcolm Jenkins, with in, 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 lots of guys making yeah. an initiative, uh, Anquan Bolden, yeah. to sort of get the conversation to go. And they're taking all of that information, and everybody's you know, sort of you know, ready to have those at yeah. the league meetings, whether it happens now or or at the end of May, as Shrag said. So we'll leave that there. Lots to be discussed here on that, of course, and other topics at the annual league meeting in Orlando. Uh, coming up, it was one of the most spectacular plays of the year. You can hear why Sean Payton blaming himself for the loss to uh, Minnesota. Hmm, we'll get there. And we'll pick the one meeting that we'd like to see happen and where down in Orlando. We're going to do a fantasy 